One of the things that we need more of is music that's aspirational, music that's hopeful, music that lifts us up together. And especially when we sing music like that in community, it can change the way that we're feeling about ourselves, about our community, about the state of the world, and our responsibility to act in it. I'm very excited to welcome Rabbi Josh Warshawski to Bethel Synagogue Center. Josh has composed a new melody for Ein Kamocha as a part of our Shirei Neshama series in honor of Shavuot. So Josh, why don't we begin by you telling us a little bit about your own journey to becoming a composer of Jewish music. Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's always so wonderful to get to be here at Bethel, and I uh, get to be a part of this project was really a gift, so uh, it's really wonderful to be here. And my journey really began, I grew up in Chicago, and I grew up immersed in the conservative movement in, uh, I went to a conservative synagogue, I went to Solomon Schechter and Camp Vermont in Wisconsin, and music was a big part of all of those experiences. At Solomon Schechter, I had a really incredible music teacher named Roz Epstein, who taught me all of the music of my childhood, all the songs that I would sing running through the hallways, um, Israeli music and folk songs and holiday music. When I went to college and needed a job, a synagogue in South Orange, New Jersey reached out and said, we're looking for a music teacher for our Hebrew school. I said, I guess I could probably do that and realized how much I loved facilitating prayer experiences. So I want to just ask about this, this song that you've composed. You chose, we didn't give you any direction, you chose Ein Kamocha, it was around Shavuot. So can you tell us a little bit about why you chose that specific, uh, those, those words to set a tune, a melody to? I'm always trying to think about ways to renew and re-engage the liturgy. One of my favorite lines from the Sidor is, um, God who illuminates the earth and all of its inhabitants with mercy and every day in goodness renews the act of creation. So what does it mean to look and renew the words by hearing them in a slightly different way? I thought about what it means that we receive Torah every week in addition to just uh, on Shavuot when we're receiving it from on high. We take it out of the ark. And so I flipped to the Torah service and I was looking through these words and I looked at those words on the top of the page and I thought, there's something really real and really powerful that's happening. And there's a conversation that's happening with ourselves and thinking about, wow, there's, there's no one like you, God. In kamocha ba Elohim. Among all the gods, we're saying there's, there's a lot of different religions and, and we all worship in different ways and we feel that this is our true path. And at the same time, we're pulling out the lessons that we've learned from our God. And then we have this moment where we say, let's think about uh, a moment of mercy and petition before we take it out and learn the laws. Avarachamim, like our, our merciful parent, what do we need in this moment when we're taking out our tradition and trying to bring it to the next generation. One of the metaphors I've heard from Rishi Kashirway, who asks musicians to share a lot about their music, is a metaphor of a house, which you can see from the outside. You can imagine certain things about the inside, but you don't actually know what's inside of the house until you enter it. And he says that musicians create houses with songs, and only you know what's really inside, all of the different pieces of a song that come together to form this, this creation. And so can you share a little bit about what the inside of the house looks like with this melody that you've used for Ein Kamocha? Absolutely. First, I mean, I love the house metaphor. I think there's something fascinating in that. And all of the melodies that I, that I try and craft, I love getting to, to sing them in a concert and get to perform them and share them. But when I get to spend a Shabbat with a community or get to be immersed in the melodies, there's a whole curriculum behind them. There's midrashim, there's stories, there's all these things that are connected to each other. There are the ways that the inter instruments interact and converse. There are the ways that the words lift up and are repeated. And, uh, and all of that, I think, is, is very apt. It's, it's the decorations in my house for that melody. And I actually, I learned from cantor Ellen Dreskin a couple weeks ago that a very similar metaphor related to prayer, which is that the Sidor is also a house. And what we can do with, this, with the words of the Sidor is we have to bring our own decorations. Right, I noticed in the house you've built for, for this verse that you repeat the word Ain, and there is no, no one like you, God. And I'm, I'm curious if you could share a little bit about your thinking behind that or what that, what that means. 
So this is something that I've done for a few compositions is to start with one word and emphasize that word at the beginning. And here I was thinking about what somebody would say when they're in conversation and they're thinking, Ain kamocha, there is no one like you. They might just be like, wow. Wow, there's just, there's just no one like you. Ain, ain, ain alecha. And even in, in Israelis, you know, in slang, when they say, ain alecha, there's nobody like you. They, they would repeat that ain, there would be that emphasis before you even get to what it is we're talking about. Ain, ain, there's nothing more than you. There's nothing greater than you. Ain, ain Adonai And then moving on into the, the second section, which is Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imloch. This is emphasizing God's name and repeating this presence that's, that was, that is, that is to come. Adonai is always emphasized. It's sort of like a waterfall. It goes all the way up, it goes all the way down, just like this never-endingness of is, was, and is to come. Adonai I noticed that that third piece, you, you go from major to minor there, and it, it's meant to evoke that kind of petitionary moment. Absolutely. In the beginning of the melody, when you get to that part where sort of this, this uplifting, it's, it sounds almost like it's in major, it's lifting up. And when you get to that petitionary part of the third section, it moves into a more of a, a somber moment because we're asking a question. I want the melody to evoke some, some shift from this like regal of the Ein Ein Kamocha to the Avarachamim. Can you give us this, this thing that we're asking for? Can you bless us in this moment? I imagined when I was a kid, what would it be like to be a rock star and then turn the radio on, remember radio stations used yeah. to play music, <laughs> and hear your own song on the radio. There's a deeper question here, which is, what is it like for you as someone who creates some of the music you create, it's really intended to be used in prayer for an entire community who might be standing before God and asking for something or expressing some kind of dream or yearning for something. What's it like when you hear a melody that you've created set to that, that scene, that place, that moment of, of prayer? It, in some ways, hearing your own melodies is very strange, but the melodies are meant to be shared and they're meant to be sung in communities. On Friday night, we were here at Bethel and we, would, we started singing Yedid Nefesh. We started singing Lechun Aranana and we used these new melodies that just came out this year. And because the community had been prepared and Jack and everybody was working on singing them already with the prayer team, I started singing and immediately it was enveloped in harmonies and in song and in the voices of the community. And that's... It's a really, a really powerful feeling to feel the melodies that you brought into the world lifted up by other voices. On our prayer team, we think of your music as sunshine, right? <laughs> your composition really is uplifting for people. And we sometimes say, no, when we create, you know, a set list for a Malava Malka, we, sometimes we say, we, ne we need more sunshine. We, we need more optimism or hope. And, and your music really does that. So can you speak a bit about how you see that vis-a-vis -vis the state of the world in this moment? I think music has the ability to do a lot of different things, right? Sometimes we need music to ground us where we're at and help us to immerse ourselves in emotion. When you go through a bad breakup or you're, or you're really struggling, sometimes you just want to listen to melodies that hold you and expand the emotions that you're already feeling. And at the same time, music can also change and impact us and affect uh, how we view ourselves and the world. And especially in a time when the world is really hard and the world is really dark and there are a lot of terrible things that are happening. I think one of the things that we need more of is music that's aspirational, music that's hopeful, music that lifts us up together. And especially when we sing music like that in community, it can change the way that we're feeling about ourselves, about our community, about the state of the world and our responsibility to act in it. And so I use the music as a medium and a catalyst to do that. Thank you. Thank you.
Shalom.